Or if you are very unhealthy, that means you can't work out. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our Fitness Myths Debunk series. I'm Dane. I'm very excited to uh, talk to you today. Today's subject is actually very near and dear to my heart because it's one of the most popular exercises in our company and across the world, yoga. And there's actually a lot of myths that we would like to debunk today. And we brought an expert with us, Mr. Aki, to debunk the top five fitness myths around yoga. So very excited to do that today. And let me introduce Mr. Aki. Hi. How you Hi, Dave. Good, Good to see you. See you. Yeah. And hello, everybody. So let's see today. What's uh, the questions in the Pandora box? Let's see. Thank All you. All right. So the actual first myth that I want to debunk is do you actually have to be flexible to start yoga because i'm not flexible they talk about touching toes i can't even touch my knees so do you actually have to be flexible first to begin yoga wait so straight away the answer is no mm. but let me go more detail if you are not flexible then it needs more yoga for you because flexibility is all about flow of energy the better flexibility there's a better chance of flow of energy within us it could be physical or mental energy Secondly, every human being is unique. We say everybody has a unique DNA. Mm. Same, every human being is very special and unique on their own term. So yoga teaches never compare mm. with others, mm. never judge others. Be feel confident and be a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we do yoga, flexibility, power, focus, concentration, these are the byproduct. It will come its own. Mm -hmm. But behind there, I have a life lesson on that. Let mm. me share with that. Mm. We say, if we regular, with discipline, we do easy postures, then suddenly you find, you discover yourself, wow, you could do most challenging and difficult postures. Mm. And this is the lesson, if we are disciplined in our life, we are regular disciplined in our life, mm. so whenever there is a challenge or difficult time comes, mm. we can easily can overcome. So right. that is the lesson we get from yoga. So there is no utter need of uh, flexibility, every human being different, and we can enjoy and be a better mm. person of self. I think I could I, I, I love it. it. It's like progress. Right? We, we're not looking for perfection. Yeah. It's like uh, in order to start a diet uh, and I have a horrible cholesterol, I need to start a diet, right? Yeah. I have to start somewhere. Or if you are very unhealthy, that means you can't work out. Yeah. It's ridiculous to say that. If you're unhealthy, we need to start exercising. If you're, you're not flexible, you should start slowly with some yoga classes. So it's progress over perfection. Totally agree. Oh. That should be everybody should uh, get this sense of uh, flexibility and related with yoga. Awesome. So the right. second myth that we hear all the time is you have to be thin to start yoga and i'm not thin and i've been actually very fat and uh so actually i hope you can shed some light and really show that this is not true you don't have to be thin to start yoga what's your thoughts on that okay instantly i can make you thin within moments the moment i make you stand another japanese sumo beside you you become thin all right, all right, all right. so thin fat tall black white all these things i i believe these are the relative word yeah, this perspective. is perspective perspective relative there is nothing called absolute yeah. So these are. So it's also the answer is the same like flexibility. Mm. So we should not compare. Thin, like I tell, this is a relative word. The most appropriate word is to be healthy. Mm, mm, mm. If you go further, you need to be happy. Right. Go extremely further. What yoga says, we have to be satisfied. Right. So if you have everything, you are the perfect yeah, size, right. but you are not satisfied, happy, then it's no meaning. Exactly. So yoga says, if somebody is overweight, it helps to reduce the weight. If somebody underweight, it helps to increase the weight. So mm. yoga is all about the happy and healthy living. So we do not must think about thin, fat, all these are people think from outside perspective when they compare with others again. Right. So you should not uh, keep this in our mind. Be confident of yourself, think you are the best and like we say, work for the better. Our third myth today is there's actually some people out there that say and believe that doing yoga is not a workout. Now, from my personal experience, I've done some classes and there's been like a swimming pool of sweat <laughs> for me. <laughs> so uh, maybe you can explain, uh, is actually doing yoga a workout and uh, how so? H how does it actually work out your body? Workout is a part of life. We need to have workout to have physically, then goes to mentally health. And yoga is the best, the most scientific way of living. This is the way of life. Best, we say my ancient and scientific way of life. So exercise is a definitely a part of our life. Mm. And in yoga, there is a part called asana, postures part. When we practice these things, this is totally focused to physical activities. Right. And it could be from very easy to extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. On that way, we have customized in our company, if somebody goes and see the names of the classes, we have customized the classes from very easy as per the need of the mm. members or the customer. Right. So if somebody is old, new, we have some easy, together we put some easy mm. postures with 
needs a little bit less energy, less focus, less flexibility, we put it together mm -hmm. so they can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Then some classes going forward, little more challenging, more challenging and mm -hmm. extremely challenging. So advanced classes like Vinyasa, Ashtanga, Dynamic Yoga, these are extremely challenging, mm -hmm. need extremely focus, power, energy to run that class. Mm -hmm. So we cannot say it's not challenging like you say, if we, especially for men, if they do they have lack a little bit comparison to lady right they have less flexibility but they have more power right right exactly so when they do the flexibility part they are sweating well yeah yeah and it gives you more power error realizes how much power you don't have <laughs> as a man and after yeah. the class they feel more relief more yeah. easy even if somebody 70 80 100 kilo but they feel like light mm. they feel they are like floating in the air so that lightness that easiness comes so I've, I've kind of, I, I agree with that. What I love is that we can design yoga based on what level you're at in your own life. So there's no one size fits all. It's very up to the individual. And in all the classes that we run at California, we have classes for any person at any level, at any age. We have, that's why, more than 50 different types of classes. And all are, in a broad sense, are divided into three groups, beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes. And within beginner, maybe 10, 15 different types of classes. Right. Within intermediate, 10, 15. So we give a lot of, bunch of different, mm. uh, need solution uh, so, uh, what do you say problem solution solutions yeah, yeah. to their need so basically even though that we have those classes we will be also holding the california sunrise challenge the yoga challenge so we can really you know, test your yoga for a better self really see how you've uh, progressed so if you began as a beginner and you go to an intermediate and an advanced that is the main purpose we need to test ourselves uh, where we stand how far we have come across so this is the great opportunity that everybody should join this Pro, they say your championship mm. and they have fun, get a great experience and especially know your own yoga journey. It doesn't matter if you're beginner, intermediate, advanced, join right now for the California Sunrise Yoga Challenge. Please.